This time on Sightseeing Spot Facts, we're taking a look at the Statue of Liberty. As recognizable as the National Flag, the White House, and the Golden Gate Bridge, the Statue of Liberty has become one of the most iconic symbols of freedom and democracy in the United States and around the world. Representing the Roman Goddess of Liberty, the copper statue measures 46 meters high, with a total of 93 meters including the pedestal and foundation. Her crown, which visitors can go inside after climbing 162 stairs, has 25 windows and 7 spikes or rays of light shining out from her halo. In one hand, she holds a torch with a flame coated in 24 karat gold leaf, symbolizing enlightenment, showing us the path to liberty, and in the other hand, she holds a tablet with the date July 4th, 1776, the date the US declared independence. As she strides forward, a broken shackle and chain can be seen at her feet, signifying freedom from slavery. Situated on Liberty Island, she has stood here for 136 years, since being completed in 1886. Facing southeast, she welcomes ships and ferries into the harbour, carrying visitors and people looking to start a new life. But how and why did this statue become the national treasure it is today? The idea for it began 20 years earlier in 1865, in France, with a Frenchman called Edouard de Laboulaye, the president of the French Anti-Slavery Society. He wanted to present America with a monument to commemorate three main things. France and America's alliance in the American Revolution, 100 years of independence from Great Britain, and America passing a law that had just ended slavery and hoping that it would lead to the end of slavery elsewhere in the world. He mentioned his idea to his friend, a sculptor named Frederic Auguste Bartholdi, who would come to design the monument. The interesting thing about Bartholdi is that, many years earlier, he had tried to build a lighthouse on the Suez Canal in Egypt, with a project called Egypt Carrying the Light to Asia. But Egypt rejected his offer, saying it was too expensive. I wonder what kind of monument America would have now if Egypt had accepted Bartholdi's statue of a robed woman carrying a torch. Bartholdi's earlier project changed from Egypt carrying the light to Asia to Liberty enlightening the world, now known as the Statue of Liberty. The robed woman would now be based on Libertas, the Roman goddess of liberty. It was decided that the French would pay for the statue and the Americans would pay for the pedestal. The sculptor Bartholdi needed an engineer to build his sculpture and he turned to Eugene Viollet-le-Duc who decided to make the copper skin in separate pieces and later connect them. He formed the shapes by hammering the pieces over a wooden mould to a surprising thickness of only 2.4 millimetres. Unfortunately, he died during the project after completing the head and arm and without leaving instructions on how to finish it. So Bartholdi hired a new engineer and it was no other than Gustav Eiffel, the man who would build the Eiffel Tower just a few years later. Eiffel built a new internal support structure for the statue's skin in such a way that it allowed the shell of the statue to move in strong winds by as much as 7 to 12 centimetres, as well as expand in the summer without cracking. Almost 10 years before the statue was finished, parts of it were being exhibited to raise money to complete the project. The head was shown in the Paris World's Fair and the torch was exhibited in New York and Philadelphia, where people paid to climb up the arm to the flame. Despite these efforts to raise money for the build, Americans weren't that excited about it, and some complained about why the US should pay for the pedestal when it was supposed to be a gift. The famous publisher and newspaper editor Joseph Pulitzer saved the day by publishing an article in his newspaper 
appealing to the people to give any amount they could in return for their names being printed in the paper, and also by saying words to the effect of, let us, the working class of America, fund this, not the millionaires. This worked and the money was raised. Richard Morris Hunt, the man who designed the pedestal, originally wanted it made of solid granite, but because of a lack of money, he had to use poured concrete walls and cover them with granite blocks. This pouring of concrete was the biggest to date at that point in time. Before being built in America, Lady Liberty was first assembled in France and then disassembled into 350 pieces and shipped to the US. It might be hard to imagine, but the Statue of Liberty wasn't always the green colour we see today. For the first 20 years or so, people observed a gradual change in the colour from a rich red copper to a dull brown and eventually to green as a result of its exposure to the environment. Another thing that has changed since its early days is access to the torch. Until 1916, 12 people at a time could climb the narrow ladders to the torch and look out. But the city was attacked during World War I and an explosion sent shrapnel flying at the arm, damaging it. After repairs, it was never reopened and is only used by maintenance workers now. And lastly, a visit to the Statue of Liberty Museum on the island is highly recommended because there you will see the original torch which was taken down in 1985 and learn much more about the Statue of Liberty. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more.